Hi there, Bob Wormsley here from Insidium. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be recreating this really cool dry ice smoke effect. This is going to be using the new Nexus Exposure effects, which has been added to the Insidium Fused Beta. And also remember, the Black Friday sale is now on, 50% off everything including subscriptions and if you're buying the sale obviously you'll be guaranteed access to the full insidium fused release which will be out in december so let's get started in our scene here we've got our exposure effects domain and we've got our nexus logo geometry we've also got a hidden tube primitive and this is what we're going to use to emit our smoke from and we'll use the uh, logo geometry as a collision object so let's have a look at our exposure effects settings then our this is a completely um, default domain apart from we've resized it to these dimensions so what we're going to do is go to our object sources tab and we're going to drop in our tube because that's where we want to emit our smoke from we're going to emit from the volume and we want loads of smoke, we're going to put it on 5, we'll leave the temperature on default, uh, we don't want any fuel, we're not going to do kind of ignition of fuel in this one, um, we're just going to do simple smoke. Let's put our pressure up to say 30, which will kind of force the fluid away from our tube, let's hit play, and we'll just see what we've got. So there is our basic smoke that's rising upwards and then escaping from our domain. So first of all, this isn't really high resolution enough. So let's go to our simulation tab, change the voxel size from the default 4 to 2. And now if we hit play, you'll see that that's looking a little bit more detailed. We'll go higher than that later, but let's leave it like that for now. Right, so the problem is our smoke is rising up and then just disappearing and escaping from our domain. So what we need to do is adjust the buoyancy. We want the smoke to sink. So let's come down to our, the bottom of our simulation tab. We've got our buoyancy settings. The default smoke buoyancy is 4. If we put this down to, say, minus 20, we're going to start seeing that smoke being emitted, rising a bit with temperature, and then falling. But now it's escaping out the bottom of our container. We need to close this bottom bit off. So let's go to our solver tab. And at the bottom of this, we have got our domain boundary walls. They're all open by default. Let's close the minus Y, which makes a floor effectively. Hit play. And now we have got, I mean, that's our basic look, isn't it? There is our dry ice spilling out um, onto our floor. What we could do is actually just adjust the display a little bit to make it look a little less smoky so we can make it a bit brighter. Let's go to the display options and look if we put the albedo up to full which is kind of like the reflectiveness of the volume and then the anisotropy if we reduce that to a negative we start getting this look that is a little bit close to what we want uh, okay we can just leave it like that for now that's fine let's go back to our settings right so now we have closed off that we have got this um, closed floor which is cool now whilst we are in this solver tab where we um, switched off that uh, boundary wall uh, switched it on let's go to our advection solver settings now for most scenes you can probably just leave these in the defaults and it'll work fine you don't need to come into this tab at all but what i'm going to do is change my velocity advection to the fast solver and the temperature to the fast solver as well that's going to simulate slightly quicker but it's also going to have a bit of a kind of a smoothing effect. It's going to be less detail. And actually for us, it's going to work really well. So that's starting to look really nice, isn't it? You can really see the pressure forcing that fluid outwards. Uh, but look, our smoke is uh, dying off very quickly, isn't it? We want it to linger around. So let's fix that. So we'll go back to our simulation settings. And we have some dissipation settings. By default, it's on 1. Let's put it down to, say, 0.2. And now that smoke is not going to dissipate as quickly. That's looking good, and it's hanging around for way longer. Once we start getting some forces in the scene, this is going to start looking cool. Okay, so now that we have got that, let's get our collisions working. At the moment, there are no collisions going on. We want our smoke to kind of rebound off the surface of our logo. So let's go to our Object tab. We want to go to our Colliders tab here, drag in our logo, just leave it in the defaults. And now what we're going to get is our smoke 
and it's not going to be able to penetrate the volume of that logo. Okay, so now we want to start making this swirl around. We'll go to our Dynamics tab, and by default, we have a Turbulence Force and a Vorticity Force in this scene. Let's just switch off Vorticity for now. Now, Turbulence um, kind of injects velocities into the grid um, using our GPU noises. So if we just put this on, let's put it on, say, Strength 10. We'll leave it in the default simplex. So this is going to create some noisy movement. Oh, because we've got it a large length scale, we're going to have some quite big swirls. And we can see those big swirls happening in the fluid. That's looking pretty cool. Um, I think this is moving a little bit too quickly, actually. So before we move on to uh, adjusting our noise, I want to show you a really cool feature. If we go back to the Object tab, to the Simulation tab, we've got retiming. Uh, so it's on 100% by default, so just real time. But if I take this, let's just let it come to about this frame. And if we put our retiming value down to, say, 50% half speed, you'll see we're getting the same movement. It's just twice as slow. Um, so that's working really well. And we're starting to get very close to our look. So this is looking pretty cool with our simplex noise. Let's just put the strength of that up so we can see it really in a really pronounced way and look we've got all these different types of noises that we can use um, we could use a turbulence which is obviously going to give us a different look and you obviously just mess around with them and have a play and find which one works for you I'm a big fan of Voronoi so I use this all the time so I'm going to go with a Voronoi I'm going to reduce the length scale down a little bit I'm going to take all of the octaves out because this reduces detail I don't really want any detail I just want to get the swirls from this noise so that's looking um, pretty cool and put that strength down to say 10 I think and we're starting to get close to what we want. So the turbulence layers will inject these velocities, but what we can also do is add some fine detail with vorticity. Now this doesn't add anything, but what it does, it um, kind of exaggerates existing swirls within the motion. So if we put this up to say 6.2, you're going to see that it just brings a little bit of fine detail where the turbulence is bringing us the big swirls. If I really ramp that up to, say, 10, just to exaggerate it, you can see that we get this really nice kind of cloudy look. Uh, if you go too far on this, it can start to look a little bit like overblown, uh, look, looks a little bit like cotton wool it goes really fuzzy uh, which it may be a look that will work for you but for us this has gone a little bit too fuzzy but it looks really detailed doesn't it it looks um it looks superb but let's just uh, reduce that down to say 10 and we're starting to get some pretty cool smoke let's just go to our top down camera so we're pretty much there now let's just let this run through a bit and i'm just going to hit pause so what we've done is we've set up a redshift material on here i'm not going to go through the rendering in this tutorial we'll do that in later ones but we'll include um, the material in the scene file in the description so you can have a look and dig around in that but if we go to redshift render view and if we render you'll see that we're getting our uh, really nice smoke this is looking good now, it's not quite detailed enough now so the final thing i'm going to show you is let's just switch that down what we're going to do is go to our exposure effects we're going to go back to the object simulation and we are pleased with this motion but we're going to upscale this by one step so now we're going to get loads more detail now it's going to simulate a little bit more slowly because obviously we've effectively um, massively increased um, the voxel count within um, within our grid you can see that there's more detail now in that smoke as it's developing so what we'll do is let this run until we've filled up the frame a little bit more but you can really see we've got some very nice swirly motion we've got some nice interaction with our logo um, and then that vorticity is bringing us that nice detail. So somewhere like that, we could leave it. Let's go to Redshift Render View and let that one start rendering. Yeah, and this is obviously not clean yet. Need more samples in here, but we're starting to bring out some really nice wispy detail in that smoke. Really nice. So that's how we can use uh, Nexus Exposure Effects to create this simple but really effective dry ice smoke sim.